Today I'm going to work on my 1997 Pontiac Firebird. I'm going to replace the existing stock headlights with the HID kit I bought from Hawks 3rd Gen Parts. Alright guys, like usual, I probably could have got these parts separately online for a lot cheaper than what I paid for from Hawks, but I paid for the convenience. I wanted to get a full kit. It was for my car. It was a 93-97 Trans Am Firebird kit. I just went ahead and bought it, pulled the trigger, and I'm going to unbox it. Here's the glass housings. They have the uh, removable bulb, which is what I was wanting. If you have a 93 to 97 Firebird and you've uh, had to replace a headlamp, first of all, you got to find a sealed beam bulb in an auto parts store, and then when you do find it, you got to fork over an arm and a leg because they just don't make too many of them anymore. So far, this is the headlamp assemblies. Don't see any damage in the shipping, so that's good. And then here's the, the guts. Great, I bought a Mustang. Emotional damage! HID Xenon Light High Density Discharge Lamp. There's the bulbs. There's the ballast. I'm going to have to find room underneath the hood somewhere to get those ballasts put in. I said all this stuff's supposed to be plug and play, so if it's not, then I'll be a little upset about that. There's the headlights, so. Said it came with instructions. I guess that's the instructions. So, never done this before. We'll figure it out together, I guess. Okay, to start, what I need to do is get the headlight up and take off the surround and remove the headlight and start uh, finding out a way to get this thing plumbed into my existing car. First things first, I want to disconnect the, the wire for the electric motor for the headlamp. I'm going to remove my dust cover and then I'm going to manually raise the uh, headlamp by turning this dial counterclockwise. Um, what you want to do next is remove the uh, two screws on the black bezel here. There's two screws uh, on this side as well. Get those removed and remove the plastic trim and then it'll help us get more access to the headlight. Once all the screws are out, I like to drop it down while I pull this out a little bit on the side. Kind of get the points up and pull outward, it'll help get that out pretty easily. What's holding the actual headlight in is this black trim piece. There's two Phillips head screw, screw heads on top and two underneath it. Uh, the two on top, you want to remove those out all the way completely. The two on the bottom, you only want to back them out just a little bit because this trim piece actually has like a fork retainer that allows you to kind of indicate it. It allows you to take the bulb out without removing all four screws. So I'm going to back these out a little bit. And then I'm going to remove the top ones completely. And then this will tilt and you can kind of lift up and pull out. So I'm going to hold the lamp in place and there's my trim ring. You can see where the bottom has that slotted the top have holes in them. So it makes it uh, a little bit easier to put it all back together. You just slide, slide those in the tabs there. Once you remove the bulb, grab the socket uh, in the back, release it. There's your stock wiring, 
that we'll get to in just a minute. So what do we have here? What we have is a ballast for the HID light, um, which has your connectors here, uh, which feed to the actual light bulb. Now the light bulb uh, connects pretty much to the ballast in this little, uh, I don't know if it's a voltage regulator or whatever, I don't really know what that is. But anyway, uh, the bulb is here. Here are my power and ground wires for this kit. Now, one thing you'll notice on your stock 93 to 97 Firebird and Trans Am, you have three prongs. This kit only comes with two. So upon further investigation, uh, I did not know this when I ordered the kit. This particular kit does not have a high beam and low beam feature. It's just on. So what's going to happen is I'm going to tap into my power and my ground. And when I flip the switch on, they come on super bright. But I do not have the high beam and low beam feature anymore. So I'm afraid when I drive this car now, I'm going to have everybody flashing their high beams at me thinking that I've got my brights stuck on. Uh, we'll see how annoying this gets. Um, but I'm not real thrilled that I don't have the high beam and low beam feature. Um, again, this is a, a HID kit, which is supposed to be increasing your light output and all that. I get it. Um, but it is what it is. I paid the money for them. I'm going to put them in. So here's how we do it. Red, red on this kit is power, and the black is the ground. What I want to do is find where my ground wire and my power wire is for my stock connector. One way to find out your, which one is power and which one is wire is you can actually look at the color of the wire. Typically the black wire is your ground and then your power wires could be any one of these other two colors here. I actually got out my Chilton's manual and found that the black is indeed the ground. The tan color is the low beam and the light green color is the high beam. What I want to tap into is the tan and the ground. So the tan being the low beam, which is what we're going to keep this on. Um, I want the low beam to come on obviously naturally first, so we'll tap into that. Okay, so I'm going to test the bulb. Uh, we want to connect the red wire from the kit to the power and the black to the ground and I've marked my uh, connector with the appropriate scribe so I know which one to go in. There's the ground wire and then here's the power and this light should come on really bright once I plug this in. There we have it. Oh, I just popped it right back out again. Yes, indeed, that is bright, folks. I can't. I'm seeing spots right now. So that's my connection. Now I just need to find a way to plumb all this wiring together into my car. I've got to mount the ballast, and I want to make sure I zip tie these wires together so they're not flopping around while we're driving and chafing and all that. The kit does not come with any uh, cheap metal screws to mount the holes. Uh, a lot of guys I've seen on the internet just take some 3M double-sided tape and go along the frame rail. I see a perfect spot for it right here. I'll show it to you a little bit later. I'm going to mount it right there and then I'm going to zip tie these wires together. It comes with a like a grommet for like a not really the firewall but your your radiator support core uh, frame piece here. Um, I think this is just going to get in the way so I'm going to I'm going to try to cut this off and I bought some uh, some actual automotive wire loom that I'm going to snake over these things to keep them from getting chafed. Alright, so there's a stock housing uh, with the bulb removed. And I'm just going to kind of see where that wiring goes down behind the socket. Goes through this uh, bracketry for the headlight assembly. And then it makes a connection behind there. Um, there's my frame rail uh, be below that. Uh, wiring harness that's running through there. You see that flat spot on the frame rail. That's where I'm going to mount the ballast. And 
all this through here is awfully tight. There's a lot of wires to try to feed through here. So I'll just do the best I can. Get the wires to kind of go down where the existing stock wire kind of comes and then mount the ballast over there and uh, just zip tie all the wires tight together to keep it from flopping around too much. Okay, so as I'm routing the headlight through, uh, you can see that these are my new wires here. I'm putting that protective coat sheathing on there, um, trying to keep, I did that one a little short, trying to keep this from getting chafed while it's underneath the car. Um, one thing I noticed is that this wire here, which is actually my power wire to connect into my existing system, this was all kind of held together against uh, the other set of wires with this little rubber grommet thing. And I just decided to cut that apart, try to give give myself maximum agility here. Uh, so these were really uh, all kind of bunched together through a rubber, rubber grommet. I didn't need it. I cut it off. Uh, I'm glad I did because it's given me a whole lot more flexibility uh, to route my power wires uh, off my ballast. So, um, and I can move my stock connector uh, back and down out of the way to give myself uh, a whole lot more freedom with the new bulb uh, and more space. So, uh, work continues. I'm going to mount this ballast uh, against down here, and I'm going to get ready to do that here pretty soon, and I'll show you an update. Here's the 3M tape I bought. Uh, I'm going to use this to mount the ballast uh, into the frame rail here. It says stage 2 mounting tape. There's the mounting tape on my ballast. I've cleaned both surfaces, now I'm going to stick it on to the side. Okay, so I was able to get it mounted on the side of the frame rail. And there it is. Hopefully that'll hold. Okay, I have the ballast stuck to the frame rail. Um, I've got my other wiring kind of looping around in here and zip tied to various locations. What I'm going to do now is take my uh, shroud, put it back on my headlamp. Um, I want to raise and lower the uh, assembly manually so I can check for clearance. Um, as it raises and lowers, I don't want it to bind up on anything. Alright, that's fully closed. It's hard to see on camera, but it uh, looks like I'm not pinching any wires, so that's a good sign. Okay, I'm at the point now where I'm going to connect my headlight. So here's the connector in the back. Just push down over and it releases. Then you pop out the retainer. I'm not exactly sure why, but there's a little 194 bulb in blue with some wires on it. Uh, literally not going to use that at all. I guess it gives it like a blue halo look. I don't know. Not something I want because uh, when I have my just my daytime running lamps on uh, and my headlights are not on, uh, they're concealed. So it really literally makes no difference to have that on there or not. So I'm not going to hook anything up there. Uh, matter of fact, I may just cut these wires off just to get it out of the way. So I'm not uh, getting them tangled up in anything. But basically all i got to do now...
take the bulbs around off, plastic cover. It is oriented, so you got to have the top up, obviously. I didn't give myself enough slack. It's not wanting to sit flush. Wash my audio. So she's being stubborn. Let's see if I can get this worked on. Got the new HID light bulb installed on the driver's side. Uh, literally the same procedures on the passenger side. I won't bore you with all the video on that. Um, but just make sure that you've got the ballast secured uh, well and that your wiring isn't being pinched by your retractable headlights. Um, just keep them away from hinges and all that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive the car for a few days and then take this uh, shroud apart, kind of take a look down there and make sure nothing's uh, out of order or getting pinched or frayed or melting or anything like that. So uh, that's pretty much a wrap on getting the installation done. Uh, we'll do a walk around and do some uh, comparisons of the old versus the new here as well. So um, I'm looking forward to driving around with these and seeing what kind of uh, light output they actually do for me.